Tomatoes can get a lot of interesting deformities, scars, blemishes that sometimes can be caused by insects or other vertebrate pests, but a lot of times they're disorders caused by the environment. So take for instance cracking. Uh, cracking occurs when the meat or the flesh of the tomato fruit grows a lot faster than the skin can and therefore the skin cracks. There are a couple different types of cracking caused by different things. This is called radial cracking and it starts at the stem scar and radiates down towards the blossom end. Um, this is usually caused by heat where we live. Uh, in some areas if you have high, high humidity and sometimes uh, excess water it can happen but mostly it's caused by the heat here and it's much more prevalent in certain varieties such as beefsteak and heirloom tomatoes. There's not much you can do to prevent it uh, except choose varieties that are less uh, or more resistant to cracking and um, make sure that you have enough leaf cover to protect your tomato fruit. This is perfectly edible. You just need to cut off the scarring and the rest of the fruit is perfectly fine. Uh, it does rot a lot faster, so you probably have to eat it sooner. Um, and, if, and as an example here, this is rotted within a day or so. Don't eat a tomato that has any kind of black mold on it. So another type of cracking is called concentric cracking. And that's when, I don't have an example of it here, but that's when the cracking occurs around the scar and can radiate all the way down and go around the diameter of the fruit. This happens when it's, the plant has been exposed to water suddenly after a period of dryness. So this often happens here uh, at the end of the season when we still have fruit on the, on the tomato plants and we get our first rain. And so what happens is the plant draws up all that water and it can, uh, the skin can't hold the expansion of the water in the fruit and so it cracks. The best solution for this, this can happen to all varieties, the best solution for this is when you're expecting to have rain, you should go out and pick all of your tomatoes, even if they're green, and bring them in and let them ripen in the house. This can also happen if you're careless in your watering, so watering regularly and consistently will help prevent this problem. Another interesting scar that can occur on your tomatoes is something called zippering. This is a scar that radiates from the stem scar towards the blossom end. It can sometimes be more than one scar and it, uh, it, it is, is vertical. However, if you look closely, you can see these tiny little horizontal lines which make it look like a zipper. You can get more than one scar. You can get a number of them on the fruit. Uh, it doesn't damage the fruit at all. It's only on the skin. Once in a while you get a little hole there, but that's easy just to cut off that part of it. It's caused when the anther, which sits on top of the stamen, those are the male parts of the plant, the anther holds the pollen. When that sticks on, onto the ovary of the flower, the female part of the flower, which then develops into the fruit, causing this scarring. It's completely edible and there's really no way to prevent it. It is more common in certain varieties, but it doesn't cause much damage and so you don't really have to worry about it at all. So another scar that can appear on your fruit is something called sun scald. It appears as a white, tan, uh, sort of leathery uh, scar on the surface of the tomato, a little bit sunken. And this occurs when the, sun, the fruit itself has been exposed to too much sun or extremely high light intensity, and it causes the tissue to die. This happens on all varieties and uh, can be avoided by maintaining good leaf cover or during the heat of the day, uh, using some kind of sun cover, sh a shade cloth, um, burlap, or something else to put over fruit that might be exposed to too much sunlight. It's perfectly edible. You just need to cut off the tissue, the dead tissue. Another disorder that can occur is something called cat facing. This presents as heavy scarring and uh, deformities at the blossom end of the tomato. Unlike blossom end rot that we covered in a previous segment, this doesn't appear as a flat leathery scar, but rather more of a heavy, almost bark-like scar with a lot of little holes in it. And in its more extreme form, develops a lot of uh, deformities uh, jutting out all over. And this is another example of one that has some deformities. These aren't as extreme as it can get. In its most extreme form, there'll be lumps all over the place and supposedly it looks a bit like a cat face and thus the name cat facing. It's not a very well understood condition. 
uh, despite lots of university research. It's thought that possibly early in the season when the flowers are developing uh, and you get a cold, uh, cold snap at night that it damages the flowers somehow and thus causing this problem with the fruit. Uh, so early on in the season when you get your first fruit you might be experiencing this, this condition. Another thought is that heavy pruning can contribute to it because it disrupts the hormones in the, in the plant itself. So it's not completely clear how it happens, but it's well known that it happens in certain varieties. And so the only thing you can do about this is avoid the varieties that present with this problem. It's perfectly edible. You just need to cut the, the parts off that are deformed. And that's assuming you can find enough areas that is not deformed to get some flesh off of it. Another condition that can occur is something called solar yellowing. This happens when the shoulders of the fruit fail to produce the normal pigmentation that the rest of the fruit has, normally the red pigmentation, and presents with a yellow or orange shoulders that never develop the full color it should. This is normally caused by temperatures above 85 to 90 degrees and sometimes high light intensity. Sometimes also a, a deficiency in potassium or overuse of nitrogen. Most of these can be avoided by making sure you have appropriate nutrients in your soil, that you're not overusing nitrogen, and that you try to maintain appropriate leaf cover to protect your fruit from uh, sun damage. Some studies have proven that uh, maintaining a good amount of organic matter in your soil helps prevent this problem. It happens in all varieties and it's perfectly edible. It does not affect the, the flavor or texture of the fruit. So the previous examples I've shown you are all disorders caused either by the environment or by a particular variety that is more susceptible to the problems that I've shown you. But in this case, I discovered these yesterday. Um, something has eaten them. And in, where we live, it could be caused by all kinds of vertebrate pests, rabbits, uh, deer, um, ground squirrels. But in this case, there's no teeth marks. And I believe that this was caused by a tomato hornworm. And we talked about tomato hornworms in a previous segment, but I didn't mention that they actually get after the fruit sometimes too. They definitely like the foliage a lot more, but here I definitely don't see teeth marks and it has the chewing marks that a tomato hornworm seems to leave. 